my name is Wendy and I'm making this video uh, uh, to show people how hard it is as a single mom to raise my profoundly handicapped daughter Bree on my own. All right, now this is my beautiful daughter Bree. She's just waking up and um, it's about 8 o'clock now, but our day actually started at 6 with a diaper change to keep her comfortable so she wouldn't be wet. All right, so now we're going to get her dressed. Now I'm creeping Brie out to get her breakfast. Uh, once she's dressed, I put her on the floor and the day begins. I t usually touch Brie when she's creeping because uh, it's the human t contact and I I either just touch her here, here, or just on her head because she will move more. There's motivation. Mama's touching me, you know, and we're doing it together. All right, breakfast is an example of all her meals. Uh, she eats, Brie eats five times a day. Uh, everything is organic. Everything is cooked from scratch. That means Mama makes it. Um, Food is very, very important, and it's one of the foundations to her health and well-being. Bree's meals are basically macrobiotic, and in the last several years, I've added a lot of raw. And there's an important reason for that. A lot of uh, brain injured, I will call brain injured, profoundly handicapped children, are constipated. And raw... This is what makes the difference. This is salad that's pre-ground. Everything is pre-ground uh, because Brie doesn't chew. Uh, so this is what will make a difference how much raw she gets mixed with her macrobiotic food that she has normal bowel movements from being constipated for 31 years. So this is important. Uh, Brie eats five times a day and that consists of breakfast is a grain mixed with vegetables and a salad and she has vitamins not very many she has magnesium some b12 because she's mostly on a plant-based diet and vitamin d very important um, because her vitamin d levels were next to nothing um, so then mid-morning she eats again and it's a green smoothie lunch is a miso soup mid-afternoon is a smaller green smoothie and then supper time is an ideal macrobiotic meal. It is a grain, a bean, a sea vegetable, and a slow cooked vegetable, and a fast cooked vegetable. And now uh, feeding Brie breakfast, making sure there's enough salad. And we take away the toy. One of her favorite things is a mirror, because she's so beautiful. And as you can see, there are mirrors behind us also. She loves looking at these because she can watch the whole house through the mirrors. Um, <clears throat> our whole life changed in 1980, the day Brie was born. Uh, life as I knew it stopped, but a much better life actually began. Brie was born with a very rare chromosome deletion called wolf hirschoid syndrome or an easier way is 4p minus which means uh, on the petite small arm of the fourth chromosome she was missing um, and it the, the amount of missing is according to how profound the handicap ends up being so uh, it took two months for the doctors to diagnose this it wasn't genetic because both her dad and I were tested. It was just what it was. And um, there was, in 1980, there was very little information on this particular chromosome deletion. Uh, what we were told was, and I'll, I remember it word for word, Brie would have five years to live if she were lucky. She would never move. She would never respond to anybody. Uh, she would have seizures that would take over her life even on medication. And from where the day goes after breakfast is first thing, brushing teeth, washing face, combing hair. Um, then there are days that I check the nails, 
all everything that you would do for yourself uh, in body care I have to do for Brie. Um, so we'll go to a creeping. Brie creeps 210 feet three times a day. Uh, we put her on the rebounder twice a day, uh, five meals a day, um, and general entertainment in keeping this princess of mine happy. Um, and then there's food prep, grinding food. Um, those are baseline things. That's not in, and there's diaper changing. There have been millions of diapers changed to date. Where we've gotten at this point with Brie is when she when she was first born, I just was manic to find a way to keep her alive. Now at this point. Uh, the goal is to have Brie healthy and happy for as long as she decides she's going to be here. Brie, we keep her creeping because it's very, very important uh, for her lungs and for her heart. She's got to keep creeping, so the 210 feet three times a day is an absolute necessity. Uh, that I learned from the stimulation program which we did from Philadelphia, from the Institutes for the Achievement of Human Potential. We did a two-year intensive stimulation program that got Brie from not moving whatsoever at two and a half to being able, actually, when she was 11, 11, I had her on my own walking up and down stairs with aid and she was feeding herself, except that it took 45 minutes for each meal and I was cooking three hours a day macrobiotically there was no time I was doing this basically on my own. So now we maintain creeping and she still does a perfect cross pattern creep, which we learned. And we do rebounding and the feeding and we do what we can fit into a day. And it takes the whole day between the meals and the diaper changes and the creeping and the rebounding and when it's a nice day we get her out for a walk. Um, and the day is gone. Then there's food prep and grinding food. Uh, but Brie is healthy and happy. Get the other one up. Come on. Very good. Now what do we do with these legs? Come on. I know you want to play with the towel. Come on. Get these legs up. Come on, girl. Up you go. Look at that. You are awesome. And you know it. Come on. There you go. What a sweet pea. Okay, now I put this down so her fingers don't get caught. Come on, sweet pea. There we are. Now she fits very nicely between my legs and we trampoline or rebound. This is really good for her lymphatic system. Uh, keeps it clean. And if she's about to get a cold or feeling off, we always rebound her because it makes her feel better because it's cleaning her lymph system. The best things uh, for Brie during this period, definitely the macrobiotic diet, raw food, uh, the stimulation program. If I could do it still today, I would have kept that going full tilt. The only reason always has been the <coughs> lack of finances. When Brie was born, we lived in a house, okay. nice house on a lake, and uh, we had to sell it because Brie was is and was priority. Uh, at this point in time, uh, Brie and I are living in a one-bedroom basement walkout apartment, and the car is provided by her father. Having to fight for services, having to fight for benefits when statistically having the parent care for the child or the elderly parent is financially the most feasible thing to do. Um, I've had to fight recently for diapers uh, to because diapers were changed up on us and uh, and the, I had to fight I had to fight and go, uh, my caseworker at Health and Human Services Jean Howe got us aid support but up until ah. the 27 years, we had minimal aid support. Ah. Um, and I had a crash. I literally had a physical crash for even that to happen, which is 
a pretty sad state of affairs. So now, what is on our plate right now, a huge challenge, is that I have been told by next spring, either I have to give up guardianship of my daughter or lose the the money stipend that literally, literally puts the food on our table. This is just a small glimpse into Brie ah. and my life. Ah. And a very small glimpse of 34 years. There's so many things it's impossible to cover. I do have ah. 20 years written and ah. edited, ready to go. And um, I do have all this information to share with hopefully other families who are interested. There are people that I would like to thank that literally we wouldn't have had a roof without certain people uh, approaching us, coming into our life and offering us. Zunk, you know who you are, for eight years kept us going, and his wife Beth. Um, Marcel Vogel, <laughs> important. Jean Howe, Health and Human Services, was integral in that I even have aid support at this point in time because I don't even know if I could be here without her help. All the people, the good ones, 25 volunteers helping us during the stimulation program. Bill Boyce for a roof over our head. All the people, there have been amazing people that have been there just supporting us from the sidelines. Thank you. All right, for anybody who would like to uh, email me or write me, um, I'd be happy to hear from you, uh, to share my strength experience, whatever this experience that I've had with my daughter, if it can help you in any way. Uh, that would be at Wendy Gilker, P.O. Box 1503, New London, New Hampshire, 03257, or my email is W-G-G-A-S-P-E-C-O-A-S-T at T-D-S dot net and I hope to hear from you soon.